Sweet wonder, hallelujah, oh, sweet wonder, Jesus, the Son of God. He's working a mighty wonder. He's working a mighty wonder. He's working a mighty wonder. What you gonna do? Bless his name. He's working a mighty wonder. He's working a mighty wonder. He's working a mighty wonder. Bless, bless his name. Yes, yes. Oh, shout tobacco. Yes, tell the Lord, yes. Tell the Lord, yes. Ooh, tell the Lord, yes, Lord. Come on here. Yes, Lord. Come on, Zion. Yes, Lord. Oh. Yes, Lord. My shot. Yes, Lord, have your way, yes, in my life. Come on, Zion, in my life, yes. in my life, in my life, in my life, in my life. Have your way. Come on, lift your voices. Have your way. He comes to him. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Father, in the name of Jesus. Under the Have your way here. God, move amongst your people. And God, before we ask you of anything, God, we want you to forgive us of sin. God, whether it be of omission and or commission, God, you have the right of way. God, do unto us like you did, David. Search our hearts. God, if you find anything that's not like you, remove it and destroy it. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, let your spirit rest, rule, and abide in this house. God, we speak the healing virtue of the spirit of God. And God, we ask now that the blood prevail. Come on, help me say the blood prevail. Send your blood in the name of Jesus. God, send on your blood. God, send your blood that causes healing. God, send on your blood that causes deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, have your way. And we come against every distraction. God, we come against every scheme. God, we come against every tactic. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, have your way here. God, heal us while we're turned down. And God, turn every situation around that the enemy comes to hinder. So we know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you said, but I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. God, send on your life today. Just help me say life in the name of Jesus. And God, we say thank you for these things. God, don't, let, don't allow any flesh to glory in your sight. God, hide me even behind the cross. God, let us come into agreement in what you want to do for us on this day. In the next few moments in this space of time, God, I come to give a word unto the people. God, anoint me like you never anointed me before. God, anoint us today. For God, there are people who are sitting here. God, that have situations that need you to turn it around. God, there's some things that's going on right now that if you don't do it, it just won't be done. But we know that the scripture says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, God be the God of abundance towards us, according to the power that worketh in us. 
And God will give your name the praise. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Let's have church. Amen. Let's have church. I believe God wants to do something for us today. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's allow the Lord to do what he wants to do. Look at someone real briefly. Uh, dare not be before you long. We have already have our orders, and we thank God for this opportunity. And we adhere to leadership. Amen. Amen. But look at someone real quick and declare and decree these words unto them. Tell them everything that God has ever said about you. Tell them it has to happen. Now, if they didn't talk back, look at someone else that's that looking like they need God to do something right now. And prophesy and put your finger, not in their face, but point your finger at them and tell them these words. Say everything that God has ever said about you. Tell them, say it has to happen. Now, if you believe it for your own self, lay hands on yourself and say it's happening right now. Come on, tell yourself, say, it's happening right now. There's some things that God wants to do, and he's already done it in his timing. But we have to grab hope as the season saints used to say, I don't understand what the hope meant. But it's a place that you can't be moved. You just got to stand still and allow God to blow on you. But... If you really believe that God is really up to something in spite of what you may see and in spite of what you may be challenged as of this very moment. If you believe that the turnaround of God is blowing in your direction, I just wish that I could just get five folks that are not so complacent in their seating because their seat is warm. But if you believe that God is about to blow on you, I dare you just stand on your feet and say, God, I thank you for the turnaround. Now, I dare you to turn around. You got to turn around. Exercise your faith. And if you believe that the shadow of God, God is blowing in your direction. And all you got to do is have enough faith to put your faith and praise to it. I believe that God is turning some things around that if you praise him in his house, he'll send that same praise to your house. I tell you one more time just to turn around and say glory. Genesis chapter. Death has been hovering over my city. I told some people two months ago, I said, the Lord gave me a word for, my, for the city. And you need somebody, according to Numbers 12 and 6, that if there be a prophet in the, in the midst, that the Lord would speak to him not only through visions, but through dreams. The Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to come to the city. And that there would be deaths in the city. I buried three family members through since the beginning of this year. And there have been several other people that are not related, non-related individuals, but the Lord is sending a spirit of death. And not because someone is old, it's because God is getting our attention because the ones who are dying are the ones that were ready. And God has given us a chance to get it right. But how many of you all know that that's, we should not be fearful of death because death has no sting? And the grave has no victory. But if you believe that even in your death situation, there is life. Amen. Supervisor, I believe that even in the deadness of situations, that God is blowing on the dead thing. I dare you just one more time, and we're going to go forward in the word. But if you have some dead situations, I dare you to speak to that dead thing and say, you will not die, but live. Uh -huh. There's some things that God promised to. There's some things that God has to turn it around. One more time, say, God, I thank you for the turnaround. Genesis chapter number 32, if you will. We're going to go real briefly to Genesis chapter number 32. To mean to holler, but I feel God talking right now in my own ear. 
And I believe that God is up to something concerning us today. This is an assignment that we are here today. Genesis 32, chapter, chapter number 32, verses 22. I shall read as thus. And when he rose up that night, he took his two wives and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford called Jabbok. Now, Jubak means, it means a place of evacuation. It's a place that was designated on the other side of Jordan. Jordan was known as one of the nastiest places. That even in the, nasty, the nastiness of its location, God worked miraculous healing through the nastiness of it. It's on the other, play, on the other side of the mountain called Gilead. It falls into the Jordan near the Sea of Tiberias. Verse 23 says, and he took with them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. Verse 24 says, and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Verse 25 says, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. How many of you all are at a place where it seems like some things are out of place? As he wrestled with him, verse 26, two more verses in your hearing. And he declared and said, and when he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And when he said, I will not let thee go. There's a transitional place that you got to go through. It's called processing. And when the God deals with you at the place of your breakthrough, he will not let you go and through until he processes you so that you don't have to be reprocessed. Tell someone, I'm just in reposition. Verse 27, it says, and he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Verse 28, our last verse, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God. And with men, and he has prevailed. This is nothing new. This is a familiar passage of scripture. But the Lord spoke something to us that will cause us to have life on today. I found out that, Supervisor, that the glory of the Lord preserves you when the systems of this world is against you. That it's clear that when we deal with God, Brother Sal, that when we deal with God, we got to deal with God in the aspects of ministry. That it is true that there was an author by the name of Darrell Kenner who said that the greatest season of your life always occurs in the aftermath of someone or something trying to destroy him or her. Is there anybody in here that is experiencing someone that is trying to destroy you but they're not understanding your assignment? But because they don't understand your assignment, they somewhat put their name on you or put their mouth on you but not realizing that all they're doing is just pushing you to your destiny. If this is true, this statement is true, that, that God being who he is, he's just allowing you to experience the progression of him being your Jehovah God. He brings the believer to his place, his or her place, where he deals wondrously with you. He allows you to experience what you experience because you're just on a greater assignment. Your destiny is pushing you. Matter of fact, destiny is looking for you where you have been looking for it. Everything that God says about you has to come into subjective order. He uses his authority to command time. Brother Shilcut, he uses his authority to command the seasons of your life. He uses his authority to speak into seasons that only God can speak into. That God is so much God that he can speak about you and speak in your present when your future has already been fulfilled. That he's so much God that he brings you to the, you the believer to the point where he says, how can one be full of who he or she is unless he or she has been emptied of what they were? So you might be saying, what is God saying unto the church? One must never assume that you can understand or figure God out for who he is because your ways are not his ways and your thoughts are not his thoughts. But what God wants to do for us, we have to, he has to deal with us not only in our flesh, but he has to deal with us in the spirit. Tell someone God wants to deal with us in the spirit. Uh -huh. Man was, one must never recognize that the battle that you are battling is just in the natural alone, but it's in the spirit. Paul declared it best in 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. 